Hey what's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm actually just on the way to go ahead and collect um, my wax strips that I had ordered for the boxes. So yeah, let's get buzzing. <laughs> so yeah, so you know spring is here now so we need to make sure that we have our boxes all in tip top shape. Um, that's the reason why I'm getting more wax, uh, just so that I can actually inlay some more wax into the brood frames. Um, I'm not too worried about them harvesting much honey this season because uh, I actually I've realized that the boxes that we do have actually need to be expanded. Um, we need to add more broods or deeps onto them so that they can actually become more productive in the end of the day. Thankfully where this uh, beekeeping you know, store is, is actually very close. I know I touched on it earlier but it's literally only like five kilometers from where I stay so it's very nice to have um, you know the accessibility to products really close to where I stay. Um, should I need them and uh, they're actually very reasonably priced as well which is really a bargain because sometimes people can put quite a markup on bee equipment especially in South Africa but yeah it's, it's, it's very it's very we're very fortunate to have and I'm getting close to the place now and it goes nice to my stank so it's very nice all right so on this turn it's the next one by the store yeah it's actually a very lovely area over here there's a lot of trees um, so the bees have plenty of food sources here I won't show anything because it's just I want to respect their privacy so I won't have them on video or anything but you'll see me afterwards. <laughs> Alright, we got the wax. Let me see if I can show you guys it ends up crashing. <laughs> Alright, there's the wax sheets. We've got that set up all going now. So now it's to get home. Cut these to size because I'm not going to use the, um, the full sheet. It's not that you can't, you can. It's actually advisable that you do use a full sheet. Um, but because our bees here are so very, like they're so active and they're so quick in building comb, um, I actually don't bother about putting a full sheet on to, to help them. I mean, like I said, I know it's benefit, it's beneficial for them if you can, but if you don't, it's just a guide. It helps them build in the frame so they don't build skew and all these whack formations inside your box. Um, I'll just cut a you know a couple of centimeters off of that. So one one piece should give me at least five frames. Um, so two two pieces of wax should give me a total of 10 frames, um, which is great. Saves you cash. I mean, they're not expensive. They're 25 pieces, you know, 25 rand a piece uh, when it comes to the, the size of wax. But, you know, if you have, I don't know, like let's say 100 halves plus, and you're buying one piece of wax per frame, that's going to get expensive. <laughs> you can also use these, uh, these wax sheets in your supers in the, in the chamber where the bee makes the honey you to take. You can use them there too. It's the same process. You just cut off a piece and then you add it in the top slit on the frame so that it hangs down and uh, yeah, bobs your auntie. But yeah, any assistance that we can do with the bees to help them, you know, progress, build faster, make comb quicker and just feel more comfortable in the hive, we do that. As is buying comb. So yeah, be sure to carry on watching. I will then show you guys of myself actually putting this wax into the, the frame and uh, actually putting it to size and everything else so be sure to check that out. Another exciting piece of news I got right now is that my babies are here. I actually bought two colonies. I wanted to see what they would be like compared to the ones I have at the apiary. I was just told that they are ready for collection. So on Saturday they want me to come there in the daytime. Now generally you wouldn't collect bees from a location during the day because most of the forager bees are actually out of the hive so if you do collect them in the daytime you're going to lose a large number of bees that are actually not in the box so i mentioned to the person or to the lady that i would prefer to come from at least at least 3 30 in the afternoon because over here right now it's still very cold so the bees tend to go back home quite early um, normally by half past three they start you know going back to their broods going back to their boxes and uh, you can take them home and you would have a large amount back home you wouldn't be missing up you know too many bees that will actually put a detriment to your half um, so we'll see what she says hopefully i can fetch them after three it'll be great if i can um, because i really don't want to lose as many bees as i can i mean i'm only getting five frames in the box of bees i'm not getting a full box of bees i'm not getting 10 frames of bees 25 so if i can try and keep as many as i can that would be great these are still your your african bees so your africanized bees your apis malofa scutella scutellata it's a weird ass name <laughs> it's got the tongue twister actually apis malofa scutellata i think that's it right i think i said it this malofa Melifa? Scutellata? Scutella? No. Nutella? <laughs> no, it's Scutellata. I'm sure it's Scutellata. 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 
Hey there guys, so yeah, so now I'm going to show you what I was talking about with the wax yesterday on the way home buying it. Obviously with the wax, I know I mentioned that you could put the whole sheet within, you know, the frame, but although that is beneficial for the bees, it's not always necessary depending on the strength of your, of your colonies. Um, but knowing the uh, colonies that we have are quite strong, um, I don't worry about putting the whole sheet in. Um, but you can, it's up to you, it's really up to you. But uh, as you can see, I've actually got a friend here, I don't know if you can see it <laughs> on the frame. There he is, just chilling nicely. Anyway, come. Get off. <laughs> All right, let's use another one for now. But anyway, so what I'll do is I'll just show you um, how we how I measure it, just to make sure that it's you know at least fits the first strand, and it's easier to actually place it then once it's in, um, because if you don't, if you make it too short, then it can break and it just has no guard on the, on the top, um, which I will I will show you guys now. So. Coming back down here, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a measure. So let's just take the frame and let's just see where it would sit. Uh, let's take it back here. Alright, over there. I do apologize for the tractor. Over there. Can mark it there. I don't want to ruin that comb. And then we can mark it just below that line of the, 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 the wire, just like that. Alright, so now that I've made my mark, um, let me just get up onto this wood slab there, it makes it easier to cut. So obviously I've got my ruler that I'll use, just to give it a proper guard, so that I'm not cutting too skew. And you can actually have a nice pattern following along the comb. Um, you can see there, it's very easy, just cutting along the ruler length. Just to get to my mark. There we go. And there's your first piece cut, ready for the frame. So now that that's done, I actually still need to clean this one out. And uh, make sure you have a proper half tool because this thing helps and saves a lot of time. Um, when it comes to cleaning your frames, um, especially in between the grooves at the bottom of the, the base. Uh, and it can be quite tricky because sometimes inside these grooves there's actually some uh, wax moth and they tend to actually lay their eggs in the cocoons inside there and it makes it very difficult to actually clean out sometimes because they actually bore into the wood and I'll try and show you, I'll get a close up on, on, on what it looks like when you actually see a, a worm inside the wood and uh, if you don't take care of that, that can actually ruin your frames um, be sure not to cut yourself or injure yourself while trying to clean the frame out for the wax alright now that that's done, I mean I haven't completed the, com the, the, the frame or I should say the wiring in this frame yet but I will I will do another video on that just to show you guys how that's all done because that's another whole process on its own but then basically that's what would happen you have your slot open you can then place your wax guard in there something like that Ooh, don't pull out there we go and then you would just heat it up and then it would melt inside there and actually then you'd have your guard and this is enough for the bees if you have a very strong colony this will be you know this will be more than enough for them to actually have a guard as to where they need to build because if you don't do this there's a good chance that they will actually build very skew in your box and when you try and do an inspection on the frames you actually tend to break the comb and it you just ruin their complete hive which is not nice because then they tend to get aggravated with you and they, you'll lose a lot of babies as well um, which is really not that nice. There we go, there's an example done of one of the frames cut out for uh, a guard on the brood frame. Alright, so now that we've actually completed the, um, the placing of the wax on the frame, I actually want to give you a closer look of how these wax moths actually destroy your frames if you don't take care of them. Um, if you left your box out, the box is outside and stuff, then um, they can actually get ruined. Um, but let me just see, I mean, here you can see, I mean, look, that's the fragility of this piece of wood, and that's due to the actual wax moth. I, mean, I don't know if you can see in there, or underneath actually might be better, you can actually see a line there that's literally from the moth, that's the, actually the, the worm inside there um, and that you can actually get it out, I mean you can just use a simple toothpick where you can, this one thankfully I can just squeeze it through but I don't think he's alive um, no he actually was <laughs> so I mean there's the example of the, the wax moth, I mean you can still see it's wet I mean that's, that, was, that was living that wasn't dead. I hope, it's, I hope you can focus. I hope it's focusing right. But 
yeah, I mean, that's just one. And sometimes these, these frames get riddled with them. I mean, you can see here on the sides. I mean, that's all from wax moth. That's all from the larvae. That's not, you know, from anything else. I mean, yes, there was half of one left in there. There's another one in here, I think, as well. They, and they really like to get into the grooves of things, too. Um, so they find, they, they find it easier to make the cocoon over there. This one's not too bad, but they can get... I mean, I've had, I've had some really messed up frames thanks to those moths. Obviously, just due to a lack of maintenance on. Here's more. Here's another example. I mean, you can see there. It, it chows it right through. They literally eat the wood. It's crazy. I mean, there's another example of the, the wax moth there. Just stuffing up your frame. So, there's another example there. It's crazy. It actually makes your frame become brittle. Also, what's really good is that if you, you know... If you do have a cold room that's, or a freezer that's big enough, um, what's also very helpful is to, to get rid of any bacteria or disease or bugs or mites, is you actually take the frames that you've taken out of the box, you place them in a black bag, and you actually put them in the freezer for a couple of days. Um, what this does is it obviously drops the temperature on the wood itself, and uh, anything that is living on there can no longer live, because anything, no, nothing can really live beyond, you know, minus 10. Um, so this is just an example. I have the... Uh, a bag of mine that put all the frames in um, and this is just one of them that I have but most of the boxes that I do have here they've all gone through the same process of actually being placed inside of the freezer so that anything that's in there can die and do that if you can't it's okay just make sure you have a good inspection of the box make sure you try and remove as many you know worms or larvae out of there that have come from the wax moth because if they're still alive and they can lie dormant for quite some time so like I said be sure to you know give it a good inspection make sure that it's all clean and then you'll be, you'll be good to go. So that's just some of the ins and some some of the ins and outs of, of you know brood frame maintenance and it's exactly the same as the, the super frame. You know you've got to make sure that there's no wax moth, there's no larvae in there um, because they can really wreck your frames and it leads to your box too. If they really get hold of the wood inside there it's gonna be gone as you have to probably burn the whole box as well as the frame just to make sure that nothing is left over and get put into the other halves but that's all i really wanted to share with you guys today thanks for checking it out so, you know be sure to like and subscribe on this channel we would love to have you join us along the journey within the wilson's apiary adventures see you guys next time